Hey y'all, I'm back. I am in Christmas Magic. This is one of Ruth Sanderson's books. She does a lot of books also that are in grayscale. So if you're interested in that, you might want to um, look it up. But yeah, this is a really cute book. I believe I did a review on this quite, quite some time ago. But I was taking a break and thought, I need to do a Christmas and then I got this little mouse done and I was like "Ooh, I need to do mama mouse and um, to match her daughter rather her daughter matches her but not yet and then the little boy I figure I'll do in a little bit different colors um, just because you like a variety when you're doing the kids because some of them look like mom some look like dad so anyway um, I do have my grise pencils out, and we're going to do the ears. We'll do the tail, and if you follow, the tail starts here and then comes over here. This is his tail. This is hers, okay, because it comes down lower and would attach here. All right, now these are some of the colors I would use if I was making gold, but it worked out perfect for her. So you use whatever pencils and colors you have and just know that this is what I am going with. So I'm turning them all upright. I am using Jasmine number 20. You can always push pause or watch this first and then go back and take notes. Ochre, which is 19. Tuscan, which is 60, and yes, I'm reading these upside down. Um, chocolate, 64. Brown, 66. All right, I am also going to be using, let's see, blush in 12, peach, which is 10, and then pink, which is 13. So any, any color that's in that realm is going to work good. I am going to do her ears first. I'm going to start with the lightest and then go darker. And I really, really want you to be able to see what I'm doing here. It is not any kind of an exact science. Okay, it's just not. So let me pull up my chair. Okay, I am going to start with the blush first. It's the lightest, so whatever soft pink you have, that's what I would say you start with. I'm going to do some here on this outer part of the ear, and then I'm going to put some just in between the outside and the inside. Same thing over here. I'm gonna put it between the very outside. See, I left just a little bit there. And the inside. I'm gonna do this little area here. That's where her ear outer edge is, like our lobe and the outer part of our ear. I am gonna come down and I am going to get her nose and then if I bring you back over, this one has more. So I went ahead and did here, and then did here, and the tongue. Okay, then I went to my next shade, the bright pink, and I did right in here and on the top, and this area of the tongue. Okay. And then last over here, I took this peach color and did here and here. And then I did a touch of brown under there. Okay. Like I said, you can go back and watch this. It's not that big of a deal. You'll be fine. All right. Let's go ahead and also do... Uh, I can't get all that in. Let's do her foot real quick while I've got it pulled up here. I'm using the blush. And I'm just getting that foot 
covered. I try really hard to keep my hand out of the way. Okay, so just get the color on there. Do the same thing for her hands real quick. Yes, I am standing back up again. Like I said, I do what I can for y'all. Okay, and then let's go ahead and pull over here and do her tail. Remember I said this was part of it, and then it comes around here. Now, a mouse or a rat's tail may or may not actually be this pink. I don't have any around to look at, and I don't wish to have any around, so we'll just leave it at that. Then I'm going to come in with this peach that I pulled, and I'm going to use it here and right here, and I'm going to blend it out. And I'm going to come in here from the tip and pull it up in there and blend that out. Okay, then I'm going to come over to this little piece here, and I'm going to do right there at the edge, and right there, and then at that point you say, well, it's almost everything, why don't we just color it in? You can if you want to. Not a big deal. Okay, let's look at her foot and her hands again. Um, right down here. I am going to use this just where there might be a little bit of shading. And really, it's just to get some more color down there. Okay? Basically, it's to get more color. Then on the hand, do the same thing. Just getting some color in here so it's not just one solid peach. Okay, now we're going to go up to her face. I'm going to go to that bright pink that I pulled. It's just called pink. I'm going to do right there on the tip and then blend it up. I'm going to come back with the regular blush. So whatever colors you pulled and I'm just kind of blending that. I just wanted it a little brighter right on her tip. I'm going to come in with just pink, my brightest shade this time, and I'm going to come over here and do some in her ears. Now I'm going to blend all this in a little bit, so don't get all caught up in what goes where. And I am doing her ears a little bit brighter than I did the child's, so don't worry about that. Then I'm going to come in with this peach, and again, I'm going to go down into the fur a little bit, because that's where that ear goes. And then I'm just going to go in here where these lines are. I know, sometimes, you know, sometimes it looks like a hot mess before it gets better. We've discussed that. Okay. Then I'm going to take my lightest shade and I'm going to blend all of this together. Just blending. I just really think that when you add more layers in there, more different colors, it adds depth. And now her ears don't look so flat. Okay? Now, I'm also going to come back in with my chocolate, okay? I'm going to come down here, because I did this down here on his feet some, hers, excuse me, the child's, and I'm just going to get some color coming out, just a bit. That's just where the dress is leaving a shadow, okay? I can also come back over here. I know you're just barely on, but you're on. I'm just doing just the edge, 
just the edges just for a little bit of contrast there. Then I'm going to come up in here, just go right into that hairline, into the fur. See, I just did little marks. Doesn't matter. And then I'm going to deepen right here so that it looks like that hair has popped up on top, like the ear is underneath and the hair has popped up. Okay, let's do the same thing over here. All right, now, ready to do the fur? Okay, stay with me, because fur is not really hard. You see how they have little bitty lines all over the place where Ruth put those little bitty lines? That's what we're going to do. We're going to take and just do little bitty lines. Stay with me on this. If you want to watch first, that's fine. I always believe that maybe watching the first time through might make it a little easier. Now notice here I went that way, that way, but then here I go up and down. Follow the lines the direction that the hair would be growing, the way that she has the lines on there. Okay, little bitty choppy lines. Let's put that pencil down. That was my jasmine, that was my lightest. Now my next darker color. So even if you do one of these in grays, pull three or four grays, five if you want. Same thing, I start with the lightest and go to dark. Because if you start dark, your light's not going to show up as easily. You're going to be working against yourself. So here I go again. Same thing. Now, with my lightest colors, I am going to use more of them. Do you see how her face is rounded this way? But it's also rounded this way. So this would stick out more. These would be more down and going under. So this is going to be a little darker and all this up here is going to be that little bit lighter. Because I'm using five different colors, this counts as one of my lighter colors. Now remember, you can always go darker. You'll have to erase to go lighter. So I can still go over all of this, and it's fine. I am staying out of her eyes. That'll probably be one of the last things I do, because I will go ahead and uh, do a Google search to see what color their eyes are, or if, you know, I want to go a different color than what's in the picture, or something to coordinate with the picture. Okay, now see, I've got it basically covered, but there's still a lot of white. That's good, you want that. You want your pencils to still be able to grab onto that. So I moved on to Tuscan, and I'm gonna get a little bit lighter on my pressure now too. A while ago I was hitting it pretty hard, I'm going to get a little bit lighter now. Okay, it's still going on. Can you still see it? Did you see what I went around? I went around all this. I am going to go into it in a minute, but I'm trying to go ahead and get my sides established first. I want to get a lot of this part covered first so that I know how much dark to put down through everything else. And don't forget to go off the edges up here. When you get ready to do this background, you'll have to tuck it down under there, or you could do everything else and then do her on top. Up to you. Now, I've done a big bulk of this triangle, big bulk of this triangle, so now I'm going to add some up through the middle, but I'm not going to fully cover it.
Okay, next color. I'm using chocolate. I don't know what you'll be using. I'm going to do this area over here. There's my triangle. Now let's look at this triangle. Now I do want to try to make sure that I'm getting rid of some of these white lines now. Now I'm going to come in and just plant some all over in here. Now you know what's next. I'm going to use brown. Now this one's pretty dark. So this is going to be my last and darkest color. Do you see how I'm being a little more careful here? I'm making sure that I'm getting all the way to the edges this time. Getting all that covered up. And not to fear, because I am going to go back into my with my lightest color again in a minute. I just want to make sure, see like all this here where all that white is popping through? I want to get all that covered this time. So my little choppy lines. But then making sure that those other colors still have an opportunity to pop through. Now, because I am using an oil-based pencil, these grises are oil-based. It also means that they blend well. So as I'm adding this color, they're almost just self-blending. Now, I'm going to put a little bit of this in here. Do you notice how little my lines are? They're itty-bitty this time because I do not want this dark color to take over. Now, I'm going to come back with my very first color, and I'm going to do a once through just to make sure. See, I'm doing longer lines this time. I'm just really trying to make sure that all the white paper is covered. Not only that, it's blending some of these lines together. Do you see how she's lighter right here than she is over here and over here? That's because this part is curving down. Okay, now I can brighten that a little. Look how if I do that just a bit, just get a little bit of color in there, how it brightens that up. Now, let's zoom back out. See how this and this, same colors, but they look different because I went back over her at the end with this color. I think on this one, I went back over with my second color, the ochre. So I could still even use the same colors and do this mouse and end up with something different. Okay, now I will tell you, because it's light right here, that means whatever colors I use on this mouse, that area is gonna be lighter this area here will be lighter. Do you see how the artist actually has fewer brush strokes here, fewer ink strokes? See how this is dark and then this is not as much. This right here is not as much. That's telling you automatically that that's this lighter area. Okay, so pay attention to some of those lines that that artist has put in there. All right, well, that's really all I have for you. The cookies. When you're doing cookies, do you see how there are dots close together right here? Let's get a look at these cookies. There we go. What do I have for a pointer? I will use this. This is a dowel rod that's been sharpened that I use with painting sometimes. Okay, so right here, all these dots, that lets you know that that's where the shadow goes. 
So if they go under the green line here, under the green line here, then they also go under the green line there. So this is drop shadow. That means the light is coming from here and all your shadows will be underneath. Shadows underneath, under, okay? Under, under, underneath. All the shadows are underneath. They drop, okay? Then in the crease of the cookie, I just did a little bit darker. At the edges, a little bit darker. See where this is actually tucked up in? Went a little bit darker. I'm gonna take this pencil right here. Do you see how I can make a line there? Make a line here. I did not have it meet in the middle. It looks like it does, and it looks like it does this. So it makes it look like that cookie is even more so in that shape right here. Okay, right here. This must be the color I used. All right, this is dropped down, so I could put the shadow here because it's a drop. Okay, right here. And then see where this lumps right there? So if you go right here, it makes it look like it's actually dipped in even more. So look for those kind of things. That's what's going to help make your cookies or whatever your picture is look even more realistic. Okay? All right. When I did her lines on her underskirt or under the, the dress, under the apron, I did darker top and bottom, left it lighter all through here. If you forget and you don't leave that lighter, get your eraser out. Go right through the middle, right through the middle. You know what? Now it's a little bit lighter there. Not always the smartest thing to do it with red because that can easily streak into your white. And don't brush like I did. Use your big fluffy brush. But do you see? And I would even do more than that, but I don't want to mess up the reds. Up here on her outfit, it's darker up in here. Here, here. Did you know that you can even use gray in here and then go over it again with the red and it will make it deeper? Make it deeper in this V. Make it deeper in this V, in this V. Okay? Make it darker here. It's way down underneath. Make it darker here and here. That's the inside. All right. Well, that's all I've got for you this time. Um, to be honest with you, I don't even remember when this is going to be put out for y'all. Today is December the 2nd. And I'm pulling up my calendar to see. You are actually going to get to view this on the 9th. Alrighty. So um, enjoy. Let me know if there's something you would like to see colored. I do read the comments, y'all. I really do. And this is a fun book. Christmas Magic. Okay? By Ruth Sanderson. I will see y'all in a few more days. Okay, bye-bye.